classical work is that it is, it is the way horses are intended to move. So when we ask them to move the way nature intended, they don't resist and it's not a big deal. And, you know, when you see people fighting with horses, once again, it's because they're trying to force the horse into some frame that the horse is differently led. At a full gallop, the pressure is 5,000 pounds per square inch on a horse's feet. So you can ma imagine what that does to the joints if you don't have the shock absorber system on. So that's why you would never want to do that. And of course, that's how horses bow tendons and pull suspensories and all that kind of stuff, because they're not working over their backs, so they can't really get under themselves, they can't utilize the pressure on all four feet. Does that make sense? So that's what really gets sense. You see whether he's strong enough. He's not strong enough to canter over his back, is what I'm telling you. So he needs much more trot and walk muscle building before we go back to the canters. You see how his canters are like a lumbering, kind of rocking horse. stabilize the back and move forward. So that when you see him kind of lumbering back and forth, that's because he's hollow. He can't, doesn't have enough strength to lift up through the back and uh, balance the two ends. Does that make sense? So we just need, with him, you need to do much more walk and trot work and occasionally canter. And you'll just all of a sudden, say, well, you never improve the canter by cantering. You improve the, the cantering by building muscle in the walk and trot. Then you come back in the canter. Thank you. 
supposed to do. It's asked for us to go straight forward. When we do that, when we're walking, we use our legs alternately. When we're trotting, we use our legs both together at the same time. And when we're cantering, we use the predominance of the outside legs and inside supportive legs. Okay, so that's what we want to just move the horse forward. A more advanced technique is to ask the horse to lift its back, which means that you have to get under the horse and give it a little pluck. So when you want to ask the horse's back to come up, you have to get under it and give it a little pluck with your heel that way upwards. So you get a little under here with your heel and then immediately put your heel back down again. Very nice. Okay, slowing down now. Deeper, softener, a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so not really not about this. This is what happens if the saddle pads tighten down like that, when you start riding, it'll rub the wither sore. So you must always have a clear channel all the way through the gullet of the horse, with nothing, no part of the saddle touching any part of the spine. So, that... so no horse can actually be forward until they're over their backs, because no horse can allow the energy to move through their bodies until they're over their backs. And once you start riding that, that's what gives us this wonderful feeling of riding a wave that never stops. So you can surf forever, or at least for as long as you're riding the horse. And the wave comes up and supports you. It literally feels like you're being picked up and carried somewhere, as opposed to being kicking and all this kind of stuff.